Hello and welcome to Thursday's Ireland AM. We are minus one Tommy Bow and an Alan actually today. Yeah, I'm as big as the two of them put together. We needed to bring we Sell needed it. to bring in one Ray Foley for two, two one for the price of two. Yeah, where is he? It's the old uh, super long weekend special. He's not Tommy, not working Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. That's lovely. You yeah. gotta you gotta do things. Yeah. Following his Instagram story last night at Coldplay. It was a cold play. Encourage us. Yeah, Unbelievable. it's lovely. That's, it's lovely, way, that's how the other half lives. Yeah, there you go. Uh, it's all about me, though. From Oscar winners to best-selling authors, we've got a whole host of impressive people on the show this morning. All right, OK. <laughs> Not us. Uh, we've got a full house. <laughs> let's get this going. Come on, right, let's, okay, go, let's, let's go, let's go, let's go. Coming up with m and removing use-by labels from their milk to reduce waste, we're asking, do you use the sniff test on food? It's uh, worth uh, specifying. On food, yes, this is in yeah. the UK. Is that me? No, no you're pretty good. It's definitely you're pretty hard. good. You're pretty good. <laughs> also, good news for anyone who hates washing clothes. The low wash movement is having a moment, so you just wash your clothes a lot less. There's people who aren't washing yep. their jeans for a year. They've got both the stylish and eco friendly consequences. So, how long would you go between washing your sheets, shall we say? 0896 111 We'd love to hear from you this morning. And you can also use the sniff test there. We're doing a lot of sniffing on the show <laughs> this morning. <laughs> uh, later, we'll be joined by a broadcaster who's no stranger to these parts. Mark Cagney's dropping by for a chat after eight, and we'll be sniffing him too. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, we'll be like, what has happened to this show since I've left? This is not Standards consensual. Have slipped, man. This is good. Have uh, plus, the Oscar winning actor known for his roles in Get Out and Black Panther. Daniel Kalua talks soccer and Spider Man later in the show. This is on. He's not going into the studio for a sniff test, I don't think. Okay, all right. We'll just he's be on he's yeah. uh, dodged that bullet. Uh, and we'll hand over to Derek as well. Derek, is the sun shining? No, I'm doing a sniff test. We're off sniff test. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, guys. I had a shower. You're grand. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's seven. It's very early. <laughs> Lads, it's the beginning of the end, uh, of, the end of that uh, good weather, in fact. Uh, so good news, I suppose, for anyone doing exams out there today. Day two, the leave insert. Uh, we have plenty of cloud cover, a little bit of hazy sunshine for a time, but showers then uh, later on tonight uh, from the south. So we'll have more on that across the morning. Uh, what day is it? Happy Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> Whenever you see Derek in a puffer, you know it's not good, because yeah, that good guy can go topless in any weather. It's rock hard. So we know that it's cold for we are this morning. Derek will talk to you in just a little while, but right now, let's go over to the newsroom for the very first update of the morning. Here is Anne O'Donnell. Thanks, Maureen. Good morning. Well, the Cabinet is expected to approve a 1.5 million euro payment today to the EU instead of providing accommodation to an additional 350 asylum seekers. Well, it comes as Ireland is struggling to meet previous commitments made prior to the war in Ukraine. Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky says th hundreds of thousands of people are without drinking water in southern Ukraine following the destruction of the Gahovka Dam. Here's the latest. Kherson in southern Ukraine, an area rich with agriculture but reliant on irrigation. Now its reservoir has burst. Thousands of hectares of land are expected to flood as waters continue to gush downstream following the collapse of the Kakovka Dam. At least 40 settlements are already affected and widespread evacuations are underway on the Ukrainian side. But the UN is warning of a wider ecological catastrophe. The loss of this reservoir will cut off the water supply to hundreds of thousands of acres of farmland, including the Crimean Peninsula, which was illegally annexed by Russia in 2014. Ukraine's agriculture minister has warned that the loss of irrigation could turn fields into deserts as early as next year. Both Ukraine and Russia continue to blame each other for the incident. Aubrey Robinson, Virgin Media News. Millions of people in the US are being affected by serious air pollution caused by smoke that had drifted down from the Canadian wildfires. While well, intense fires have blanketed the northeastern skies, prompting warnings, warnings for vulnerable populations to stay inside. Hundreds of wildfires have been burning for weeks in eastern Canada, where air alerts have also been issued. New York's mayor has said the situation is unprecedented. Stay inside, close windows and doors, and use air purifiers, purifiers if you have them. If you are an older or have heart or breathing problems or an older adult, you should remain inside. And if you must go outdoors, wear high-quality masks such as a K95. 
Well, the former U.S. Vice President Mike Pence has formally launched his campaign for the White House, setting up an historic battle with his former boss, Donald Trump. Speaking in Iowa, Mr. Pence criticised the former president and his efforts to overturn the 2020 election, saying anyone who puts themselves above the Constitution should never be commander-in-chief. On that fateful day, President Trump's words were reckless. They endangered my family and everyone at the Capitol. But the American people deserve to know that on that day, President Trump also demanded that I choose between him and the Constitution. Now voters will be faced with the same choice. I chose the Constitution, and I always will. Ryanair Holdings have reached a $5 million settlement in a lawsuit accusing them of defrauding shareholders by downplaying the willingness of, the Europe's, of Europe's largest budget airline to recognise labour unions. Well, the preliminary settlement was reached after mediation and has yet to be cleared by the court. Ryanair contends there was no lawful basis for this claim. We compare 14 insurance quotes to get you the best deal. So choose chill and work smarter, not harder. Thank you, Chair, and a very good morning. We're on to Thursday, the 8th of June. Uh, Weather-wise, let's take a look at how it's shaping up across the country. And certainly, uh, we're a little bit in reverse now as we work our way into uh, the start of your Thursday morning. Uh, we're seeing some bright spells, a good deal of hazy uh, sunshine, though, through that cloud. You can see that cloud cover beginning to build on the map at 14 to 17 there through parts of Dingle. Now, right across today, in fact, it is, again, another pretty decent day store holding mainly dry and settled but that cloud cover uh, getting to grips with many parts of Munster to parts of the Midwest still holding uh, pretty decent the further north we're going to parts of uh, the west in across areas of Ulster through eastern parts as well top temps though are on the slide so bit by bit uh, we're beginning to slip into reverse top temps there today of 17 to 22 even 23 there through parts of Ennis finally then tonight it looks like once again mainly dry and settled with the exception really of southern regions where we will see uh, some showers then begin to edge in through parts of Munster and that will carry through then into your Friday with overnight lows around 10 to 12 across the northern half of the country. A little bit milder there holding at uh, 16 to 17 degrees to parts of Dingle in Kerry. So that's how it's shaping up for now. We'll be back again at 7.35. Chill insurance work harder so you can work smarter. We compare 14 quotes to get you the best deal. Coming up after the break, supermarket prices are down, but mortgage interest rates are up. Light and shade. Yeah, good news, bad news. So we'll be taking you through the top stories in this morning's papers very shortly. We'll see you on our next Welcome back. It's time now to take a look at this morning's papers. We're going to start with the Irish Times. It's headline, State to pay EU 1.5 million to house 350 asylum seekers. The state will pay 1.5 million to a European relocation system because our Republic doesn't have the space to accommodate an additional 350 international protection applicants, so says the government. The examiner also leads with 1.5 million euro offer to EU over failure to house refugees. The payment will be issued to other countries to help with their services. Uh, now, a different story. Price cuts to set off fresh supermarket grocery war. That's the front page of the Irish Independent. Tesco leads the way with 10% reductions on over 700 products. The move is expected to force a response from rivals Lidl, Dunstore, Supervalue and Aldi. And get the airport car park sorted, Minister, is the top story on the Daily Mail this morning. Pressure is building on Transport Minister Eamon Ryan to intervene and free up 6,500 car park spaces near Dublin Airport. They're currently out of use due to the site being sold. The mirror goes with Corrie's Julie's dementia heartache. Corrie legend Julie Goodyear has dementia, her husband revealed. Scott Brand told how his darling wife, who played Bette Lynch, faces a difficult future. And the sun leads with Hutch Ado. So sorry. Hutch Ado amount nothing. Sorry. Hutch Ado. Uh, Jerry Hutch must stump up a six-figure bill for his own 
legal costs at the Regency merger trial. You just That's bursted a new hutch, was that it? Hutch, hutch Ado. Ado. Ado Hutch. <laughs> uh, the star similarly leads with Jerry takes a hit. Some legal sources believe the final bill could hit one million euro for Hutch, who owns a bolt hole on the Costa del Sol. A bolt hole. A bolt hole, but it's thought to be in Lanzarote. It's just hit for that now. It's a hole you keep a boat in. Uh, and the Herald also covers this story. It's the same story again. Monk to pay cost of freedom on the Herald there this morning for you. Now, a person who can speak correctly on the television is Andrea Gilligan from News Talks Hi, Lunchtime <laughs> Live. Good morning, Good Andrea. Morning. How are you? Lovely to have you here. We're going to start with the first story, and this is... We've been talking about this for a while. There was the supermarket summit that Neil Richmond held to try to talk to supermarkets, going, how are you, lads? Can you reduce the prices a little bit? Nothing happened. Something has finally happened. Something is, yeah, something is finally happening. And, and like, look, I know for, for viewers this morning, everybody knows the cost of what's gone into the shopping trolley in the basket has, has increased. And like, but I, I actually, it's, it's only this morning that I realised the extent of it, that it's, it's over 16% is the jump since this time last year yeah. for the same period, which actually equates to about €1,200 Euro mm-hmm. if you hadn't made any changes uh, from, from, from the same quarter of, of last year, which is a huge amount, huge amount of money. So I suppose for viewers this morning, the good news that we're hearing so far today on the cost of living uh, front effectively, there will be some relief from grocery grocery prices in the sense that Tesco have announced that they are going to slash um, their prices by, t- by 10% across nearly 700 different products. Yeah. It's just about a third of those products will be from their own brand range. So there, there will be a significant level of other products from the shelves that will will now see a 10% reduction. Okay. That price cutting is likely of course to force a response from the other major supermarket retailers the likes of Dunn, Supervalue, uh, Little Little and Aldi as well. Um, and there have been some reduction from the major supermarket chains chains particularly around their own their own brand products in recent weeks, but I suppose this move from Tesco today is likely to see. Is know, it the further, case that it's easier for them to shift their own prices? Well, I suppose with, with uh, Tesco only uh, changing a third, there's a lot, a lot of other uh, big brand items as well. But I suppose it's easier for them to manipulate the pricing on their own brand mm. items first. And uh, yeah, well, you'd imagine so because there's obviously there isn't effectively the, the middleman or you know what I mean in, yeah. in terms of where the, the product is sourced from. The um, head of Tesco Ireland had made the comments to say that they were you know they were working hard to invest in helping local communities and in local families, and I suppose. I suppose that comment is sure to seek a response from the likes of the, the farming community and farmers yeah. that are of course, obviously yeah. going to be somewhat concerned that when you hear there's going to be a 10% price reduction, how does that come about? Are they going to be uh, impacted yeah. or affected? And I, I'm sure they're likely to raise um, some questions and comments uh, around that. You of know, course. I'm sure that their margins obviously mm-hmm. aren't been affected There's the too. worry about below cost selling because we know that an awful lot of farmers aren't making more money in relation to this massive food, food inflation yeah. that Jed Nash from Labour has I been just... talking about so much. It's kind of like, who is making the money here? Yeah, and it's Jed Nash as well that has previously called for a similar um, cap on the likes of your, your staples, your, your bread and your you know milk and, and the, yeah. the normal, I suppose, products that everybody puts into their, into their shop and trolley. That's something that in the UK, uh, the British Prime Minister is currently looking at and examining there where they are going to talking about introducing plans for a cap on the basic items that you have on the shelves and Jed Nash, the Labour Party TD is looking for um, a similar I suppose mechanism to, to be brought in here I've no doubt customers it, want that too. I know but it just feels like once you do that you've got a cap on it, that's it they're going to reach re- that yeah. cap mm-hmm. and how do you then go yeah. back because and that's not what we, you know. we live in a free market apparently um, it's just the price gouging it's Someone's a, yeah. making money somewhere. Yeah, well, absolutely. And I mean, if, if you're able to turn around and, you know, one day and announce a 10% cut to prices, I yeah. mean, there's, there, there's there, something yeah. going it, on. It, well, it, it shows you, I suppose, the what, what the um, the markup yeah. is effectively on goods. That uh, happen, yeah, know. and also not huge drops. I've been looking at my essentials, tonic water, Chardonnay, cheese and onion crisps. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm monitoring them closely. Uh, so We'd love to hear from you this morning, by the way, on this, how it is with the food shop, 0896 111 one. That's the good news. Price drop at the shopping basket, shop. the shopping till. Uh, some concerns then, two more interest rate hikes expected when you're looking at your mortgage yeah, uh, yeah. prices. Absolutely. Morning. And like we've already seen the ECB have raised interest rates since July of last year. It's about 3.75%. Yeah. So what we're hearing now, we're going to get two more interest rate hikes within the coming weeks. You're talking about uh, 0. 0.25%. I think it's 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 been mooted from next week, and then a further 0.25% again, uh, 25% I should say, sorry, in 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 July of next year as well. And like this comes on top, I suppose, of the fact that you know we've the impact of the interest rate hike. 
to mortgage holders since last year, since we first had this, like it has been, it's quite significant. I mentioned it at over, you know, 3.75%. Yeah. It is a significant jump. The um, thing is that the interest rate hike, it hasn't been passed on to people who have savings, right? Uh -huh. Because there's a buffer for people who have mortgages. I totally get this. Obviously, I'm looking for a mortgage or looking for a house at the yeah. moment. So I am in the Skin bowels the of this. When they start giving this to people who currently have a mortgage and not new mortgage, like it is going to affect people in a way that we that we like your your mortgage can jump from one thousand euro that you're paying right now. You could be paying one thousand two hundred like that. Yeah. Like that well, is the, 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 a huge amount. The, the, the example cited this morning is somebody with a twenty year mortgage remaining on maybe about two hundred and fifty thousand. That so far you're talking about four hundred and seventy euro haven't been added to your bill. Four hundred and seventy euro, is a, which is yeah. a significant amount. Now that was based off a, a, a tracker, tracker yeah. mortgage holder, but it was, it was it's the example cited today, and and like I'm sure we don't need to tell mortgage holders no. that are that are looking at the monthly repayments and the significant jumps like yeah. two and three hundred quid is an yeah. awful lot of money off the back of the conversation we just had about yeah. you know price inflation yeah. across your your weekly shop as well and it's it's in every aspect and it's the sort of thing that in the uk they called for the interest rates to be given to people who have savings they were like hi we've got money in the bank we want the interest rates on our savings they're not they don't have to do that in ireland very at the minute significant level here because they have that buffer. Here, but unfortunately like it's going to be a lot of money every single week for people, I don't know what Now, there's one story that I think I was just watching this online and on the news last night, and this is the fires in Canada. Mm. And the well, it's just up the road. Canada is yeah, just yeah, up, the it's only up, up the road. We're going to see it in Lahinch before but we know. Johnny Gold will see yeah. it. This is in it's, New York. This is in New York. Yeah. Like it was literally the New York skyscrapers una unable to be spotted last night in an orange sort of a tinged yeah. smog of smoke. It was incredible to look at some of the photography. I know you can you can see it there at the moment. I mean, you literally could not see um, in, in front of you at all. I mean, this obviously happened in the Quebec province. Um, devastating wildfire season, of course, there. But it's the winds that have carried the wildfires and the smoke hundreds of miles from Canada right down to New York. It's happened over the past two days. There's now been a cold orange, which is an un unhealthy air quality status uh, for sensitive groups that has been issued um, across New York in, in some other parts as well. Because it's not just New York. I mean, it's, it's Chicago. Um, it's across it's many parts of the, yeah, the, the East Coast as well. You're talking about even a, um, a red, code red warning that has been issued too for parts, which I suppose is an indicator of the, the air quality index that's there. People have been told, shut your windows, limit your exposure to being outside. Yeah. But where this is of particular concern, uh, as someone who, someone who is um, somebody with asthma as well, like if, if you've cardiovascular vascular issues um you know heart like yeah if you're somebody with asthma it's it's it is of absolutely of concern for people um in new york at the moment but i, I saw the uh, the mayor in new york out again this morning advising people like you have to limit your outdoor exposure you've got to stay indoors air purifiers like it's and this is expected to last at least well until to, uh, into tomorrow um, wow, and it's, uh, it's ongoing. It's a lot I of mean, people it's a complete who we saw orange tinge. last night as well, uh, wearing masks while they're out. Yeah, yes. The I mean, the cold Americans masks wanting yeah. to wear masks. Yeah, yeah. There was, air quality. It is leading to an awful lot of memes and jokes as well. And I think one of my favourite was, "Hey America, sorry for sending our smoke your way, but since you survived a giant four-year dumpster fire, we didn't think that you'd notice." Oh, right, because right. of Trump, <laughs> they're getting political with their yeah. jokes there as the well. hundred million people. Is what uh, and of course, are we? Yeah. Do we have any systems in place here? Because it seems the minute the temperatures increase. Yeah, uh, there, there seem to be wildfires becoming more and more prevalent. Yeah, we do. The Department of Agriculture here at the moment. I mean, look, obviously we've had the, the grid weather conditions. Yeah. I mean, people have been out, they've been enjoying it uh, over the past 10 days or so. But the Department of Agriculture had issued um, a warning over the past day or so, basically effectively really to farmers. Um, it's an orange level forest fire warning because during this time of year, dry weather mm -hmm. conditions, dry ground, mm -hmm. there is the potential for forest fires to develop in parts of the country. So the Defence Forces, the Irish Defence Forces um, have come out to say, look, they're on hand, they're on standby, they're able and ready to mobile, trained, ready to go yeah. in the event that we have issues with forest fires. But that's also because we've got an issue with our firefighters striking. Yeah, well, there is, yeah, the pretend firefighters. You know, because they're looking well, for better wages, so that's not good. Better no, and, and, and like I suppose the, the point that the Defence Forces wanted to make was that they've crew there available um, and ready to go in the event that I suppose this high mobilize. pressure... Yeah. You know, I suppose can... people need to be aware as well to, to, to try and yeah, be but careful. It's, and be it's also yeah. as well, I mean, we constantly hear about it in the programmes, Ray, too, around this time of year, like you've people, you know, barbecuing in areas yeah. that shouldn't yeah. be barbecuing, um, you know, too close to, to dry land and in, in forest uh, 
you know, highly wooded yeah. high dance areas as well. Yeah. And, and that's really just people need to be super and What do you want to do last? Just question? really quickly, um, because the Prince Harry thing from the court. Yeah, it, it's, see it's this, an American the testimony. Yeah. But what the, the... Prince Harry admits encounter with stripper at London lap dance club in revealing court des testimony. I think that was the most, the least surprising thing that I've ever heard in my entire this, life. This is news. That a <laughs> member of the royal family was at a strip club. Yeah, well... Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, he's related to Prince Albert. So, like, it just doesn't... Prince Albert, for back the day. Yeah. It's, it's, but he's having to reveal parts of his love life and his sex life yeah. in it's, this testimony against the Mirror Group. It's about eight hours um, yesterday, I think, of testimony that he gave. The part that I find fascinating in all of this is the... the elements of the kind of the reenactment bit that we see afterwards yeah. and and I like I find that you know it's it's just a sort of a maybe it's just something we don't have in Ireland sort somewhat somewhat bizarre he says that the press had misled and covered up uh, wrongdoing for his whole life went to extreme lengths to cover their tracks this is part of the uh, second day of evidence in high court in London this is going to continue of course too uh, over the coming days but yeah. it's um are you watching it? No, are you titillated? Are, are you, it's, this is the thing, we don't have it over here, so it is kind of weird. It's like watching Aliens. It does, I, it feels the, like the, I'm watching the, a soap. I'm watching Home and yeah. Away sort of but a thing. But this guy yeah, has genuine, but it's you know, a real life. his childhood yeah. issues with the press and his relationship with the press has always been fractious and invasion of his own privacy, invasion of his own uh, life. And then his mother's, you know, going by all the way yeah. back to, to his mum and her, his mum's death and the, being chased by the paparazzi. Uh, and like to us it might be drama, but it is actually his life. Oh, well, I totally yeah, get that. Incredible. And it is, it is that he's a real person. And that's one thing that you're kind of sitting there going, having to bear himself yeah. and his soul and he couldn't trust anyone. Listen, it is absolutely fascinating. Andrea Gilligan uh, from News Talks Lunchtime Live uh, on today Morning. again at 12 o'clock. Thank you so much for joining us. Cheers. <laughs> Welcome back. Now, as Marks and Spencer announced they are to remove the use by date on their milk in favour of the best before date in the UK, it got us thinking about food expirations, didn't it, Ray? That's all yes. you've been thinking about. Any excuse for a sniff? One man who swears by the sniff test and says we should trust our senses more when it comes to producing food, uh, a project to produce, is food expert Gavin Wren, and he joins us. Now, good morning, Gavin. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, what do you make? This is Marks and Spencer's, actually, uh, that we've been talking about for the last couple of days, uh, and their decision to use best before on milk as opposed to, to use by dates. What do you make of the move? I mean, it's, it's actually brilliant because it's, there's no need to have a use by date on milk because basically a use by date is, um, is food safety. It's saying that it's, it's dangerous to drink something, you know, consume something after that date potentially. But best before is just about quality. And you can drink milk a long time after the best before date, as I've proven in my videos in the past. And Gavin, it is, we do have to say that the EU kind of did this a while ago. They did say, do you know what, lads, you can have a best before rather than uh, a use by. Mm. So it's kind of following on from that, that this is going to happen because there's litres and le millions of litres of milk are poured away every single year. I need to ask you, can you open up, does that mean you open up the milk in the shop and sniff it? Or do you have to buy it <laughs> and take it home? Like what's going on? No, well, this is the thing is, yeah, food waste is a huge thing. You know, there's a lot of food that just goes in the bin every year. And uh, it saves us money if we can consume food for longer. But you don't need to sniff it in the shop. You know, I've, I did a test with some milk recently where I stored milk at different temperatures because that actually has an impact on how long it lasts. And I think the longest one lasted for around six weeks after its best before day. And, you know, it, it's it, milk. Milk lasts a long time when you store it wow. at the right temperature in your fridge. I that's hear. Incredible. That's phenomenal. I hear. It? That's I can feel the globulates coming to the top. Is it? <laughs> you can see it. Well, this is the thing, I suppose, a date. Once you see the number, uh, it's always going to be playing in the back of you. I mean, regardless, even if it's per perfectly fresh and you just get, get any random label, stick it on. Once that date is on, on on it, uh, it's 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 always going to be playing on your mind mm. as you're having your drink of mm. milk or making the sausages or or, or whatever. Uh, I suppose it's a psychological thing, isn't it? It's a psychological thing, but also you've got to remember that when manufacturers decide on the date to put on packaging, that's a best guess. They can't predict when any food is actually going to sort of start to turn bad. So what they do is they do lots of testing based on average use, and they have to include some, uh, I guess, sort of what we might call temperature abuse, which is like, you know, when you, the milk gets left out on the side for an entire afternoon or, you know, during the, during the summer. So they have to include all of these things in their 
test to then come up with a, a rough estimate of, I guess, the shortest time in which they think it might last. So it's it's all very arbitrary anyway, mm. the, the number that's on there. So if you can learn to trust your instincts a bit better, um, milk, milk's a great example as well. Uh, yeah, go for the sniff. Yeah. If it smells and looks good, then it's basically good. And we're just wondering, do you use the sniff test? We just had our megaphone up there. It'll be up a second. Scan the QR code and let us know what you think about that one. Because uh, I'm well, I'm, I'm a sniff test person. And also I do cut the mold off bread. Gavin, is that OK? Do you know when you're hanging for a piece of toast? Yeah, so the bread, the mold, cutting off the mold is actually an interesting one. So on hard cheese, it's fine to do that. On some other things like bread, you have to be a bit more careful because uh, it can actually it can actually begin to penetrate in. So uh, with with bread, you have to be careful, but with hard cheese, it's absolutely fine to cut the mold off. Okay, you're cutting off mold on cheese there in that video. Um, how are people, you do an awful lot of content on TikTok about how people need to use their common sense more, right? An awful lot of it is common sense. But there are regulations that our governments and food safety authorities have to stick by, right? Mm, mm, well, this is the thing is, it's the difference between use by and best before is the important thing here. Best before is, a quality guide. Best before is essentially saying this food uh, may be slightly fresher before this date, but it should also still be fine to eat after this date. And I, I think a lot of people don't understand that. Whereas used by dates are the are the manufacturer estimating when the food could become dangerous to mm. eat. So that's the important difference. And so if you see a best before date on something, in theory, even if it's a year old, if it still looks and smells okay, so trusting your instincts, relying on the site is, you know, does it still look good and, you know, sniffing it and seeing if it still smells like something you want to eat, mm. then in theory, it should still be fine. You know, all your jar sauces have got best before dates and I'm sure we've all eating some ketchup that's been in the fridge more than a few weeks. <laughs> Absolutely. So. The <laughs> yes. one, you're too lazy to go to the shop and there's only one ketchup that's been in the back of the press for the last five years. It's grand. It's still fine on those chips. It's absolutely okay. <laughs> uh, I'm one of those people exactly. that, that like, like that. Once it hits the date, I'm like, I'm nervous. I'm unsure. G genuinely, very, very nervous and, uh, about about uh, uh, tasting it or, or, or eating it. Yeah. But then I'll start sniffing it. And I suppose this is where it's great to have an expert like you on, Gavin. That, uh, what, what is it in the sniff that I should be looking for? Because... I found that I could be sniffing there for a while, going, I'm, I'm, is it? Is it okay? No, it's it's fine. It's not fine. It's not okay. Mm. Whereas it might only be a day. It might only be an hour that I'm <laughs> sniffing away there. But my wife has a philosophy, which is if you if you're sniffing it that hard, it and it's you're done, and, and it's and it's you not know, making you feel revolted. Yeah, you're you're probably okay. Mm, definitely, it's a very instinctual thing. You, it, it would almost be hard to train someone how to do it, but if you simply gave someone some good milk and some milk that had started to turn and asked them to smell both of them, they would know straight away which one is it they shouldn't drink. It's It really is a, a an instinctual thing that you... Uh, sense that this is not something you want to consume anymore. So it's, and milk is a great one to do it with because it, it really is clear as day. It gets that sort of slightly tangy, cheesy I've got milk. smell. Yeah, I brought you're like, in, that's not milk anymore. I brought in milk. milk from my kitchen, which is- Hang on, what's the date on it? Normally it's, gone it's off. What are we, what date is it? 6th of June was the date on it. What are we so on? That's two days, that's two day two old milk. Two day old milk. It's low fat me. milk, so it's fake milk anyway. <laughs> Smells absolutely fine. I'm not smelling anything. Are you sm I've, I've no concerns. I'm still not going to drink it. <laughs> it's absolutely fine. It's, it's there not, you go. that is, there's no bits in it. Well, it's been in the fridge, so it's, it is actually fine. Yeah, so we just need to use our common sense more, Gavin, right? Exactly. Trust your instincts, use your common sense, and, you know, it'll get you a long way with milk, definitely. Careful about the old and meat, yogurt though. as well. It is dodgy about meat. Like, we know the Food Safety Authority of Ireland are like, lads. There's a there's a yeah, date there careful. for a reason. Sorry, with 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 meat. Are you worried more about meat? We've talked about things in jars. We've yeah. talked about milk. We've talked about cheese. Mm. They're all pasteurized stuff like that. With meat, it is a different story, though. Yeah, you do have to be careful with meat. They are used by dates, and again, while they can't predict precisely that, say, your meat is going to turn bad at midnight tonight, for instance, uh, it is still there for the food safety reason, which means that uh, it could be harmful to eat it after that date. And also with meat and fish and things like that, it's not 
always the sniff test doesn't always show up if it's bad to eat. So right. you just have to be a little bit more uh, careful around dates with yeah things that go off back quickly like meat and fish. And of course, follow you uh, on TikTok yes. under the name Ash Gavin. Of course. Uh, for for yes, advice and... and ideas. Gavin, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Cheers. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, Take care. Bye-bye. Salute, salute. I feel like a GAA player. I feel like Connell in normal people <laughs> drinking me milk. Uh, open up the box of Weetabix there, Mammy. Uh, It'll oh, be lovely. Oh, Just to let you know, uh, do you use the sniff test for food? 85, 84% of people use the sniff test. You can text us 0896 111 We'll be back with you in Ireland AM in just a minute. You're very welcome back now with over 13 million views on TikTok. The low wash movement is a growing trend which sees people wash their clothes as little as possible. When's their the last, clothes. When's the last time you washed that shirt? I beg your pardon. <laughs> the shirt is clean, but the trousers I haven't wo I washed or I, I haven't put them in the wash for about a month. Hey! There you go. Intentionally, I wore the dirty. Well, they're not dirty. They're actually grand. They're, they're fine because you know between and I'll do the sniff test on them later We're on. It's all connected today. Here to tell us more is sustainability strategist Pat Kane and Brian Zabo from Indigo Invitational. Brian, we're going to talk to you about that in just a minute. But first, Pat, obviously you're all into this. You, the low wash movement is your jam. You're mad about it. So this is just people not washing their clothes as much. It's washing as little as possible. Of mm. course, you were talking about sniff test for food. The same applies for clothes. Okay. Yeah. So basically, I'm going to sniff your pants now. Just oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't encourage anyone to sniff my pants. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome. Good morning. That is part of it, though. I mean, but when, when you're going to the laundry, it's like, it, does it smell all right? Is it, uh, there's no visible dirt on it. So there's no stains. 90% of our dirt, so dust, dead skin cells, you know, sweat is invisible. So you won't be able to see, but you'll be able to smell and at times even touch, you know, the crusty T-shirts yeah. yeah. and all that. Yeah. So it's all about being a bit more conscious for the, you know, the environment, obviously, for your pocket. You're not going to be wasting as much water, using products, etc., buying that sort of thing. And of course, you know, it's all about garment durability. Stuff's meant to last. So you'll be avoiding tear tears, color fading, shrinkage and whatnot. So that's that. It's very simple. You're making your, your clothes last longer. Well, I'd find, though, you see, it's all well and good with jeans or something like that. But the shirt would have to be changed or the T-shirt that would be under the shirt. I'm not wearing a T-shirt today, but generally yeah. a T-shirt. Yeah. I, I'd be changing my T-shirts every day. I try to get makeup on all my clothes. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Which is fine. So it's, you know, everybody's different. There's not a rule here. The rule of thumb is if it needs to be washed, Grant, you, it, yeah. you know it needs to be washed. Yeah. But if it doesn't, like denim, denim is a great example, you know, or winter jackets and that sort of thing. You don't need to wash every time you wear. Yeah, yeah uh, that enough. makes perfect sense and people don't do yeah. that. And speaking of denim, Brian, what is this that you're, what is Indigo Invitational? Well, the Indigo Invitational is the world's uh, largest raw denim baiting competition. So we started in 2019. Uh, we had more than a thousand competitors last year, and everybody starts with a brand new pair of raw denim. Uh, they wear them for 365 days, and then at the end of the competition, the best baits uh, win. Uh, so we've got some great prizes for competitors, et cetera. Uh, and yeah, you, you're seeing some pictures there. That's our fourth place finisher uh, from last year, uh, Chanifat, and uh, he's from Thailand. And this is the kind of fades you can uh, generate with a with an extremely low wash. Oh my God! Uh, you have almost, almost no washing uh, throughout the whole competition for those. They're so dirty. They're standing up on their own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's extreme. That's uh, that that's the most extreme example I had uh, in, in the collection. There. It These, looks cool, uh, though. I mean, it's it's a. It, it does. It really does. Particularly with the fade coming in. And it yeah. Looks, it unique but look. you're so to be to enter this competition. Do you have to wear the denim every single day of the year, or is it like? I'm I'm getting married. I can wear a pair of pants. So it, it's it it depends on the competitor. So we don't have any rules surrounding when uh, the pair should be washed, uh, how often they should be worn. We encourage people to wear the jeans as much as they can. Uh, if, if you wear them 365 days, you might have a good shot at uh, maybe a podium finish. Uh, and you can wash them as many or as few times as you like uh, throughout that. Uh, throughout the competition okay but we do incentivize those low wash uh, practices uh, right we're, we're not i wouldn't say i wouldn't say we're a strong uh, presence in the no wash movement uh, but we definitely encourage uh, competitors and and consumers generally to wash their jeans much less as pat said because the jeans just don't need to be washed 
yeah. uh, every time you wear them. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Could you give us a few hacks or, or pointers in terms of keeping them fresh? Oh, there's, all, there's, the, there's the spit on the nail test, which is there's a little bit there that's right. branched. That'll do now. That, mm -hmm. That'll keep mm -hmm. it over for another week and a half. Are there any further ones to keep it fresh or I suppose keep it smelling fresh? I, well, you can do give it a little bit of a sun bath. Uh, turn them inside out and put them outside. You can uh, hang them to dry overnight uh, outside anytime, any, anywhere there's kind of some air movement. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's going to help. Uh, that's going to help quite a bit. Uh, but at the end of the day, if, if they stop passing that smell test, uh, then, then you, you, you wash them. So I, I try to extend about 150 to 200 wears uh, in, 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 before my first wash because that first wash is, uh, is really important. Uh, and by that time, that that's when uh, my wife, who's uh, very patient with all this, she t she lets me know. She 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 tells me when I'm no longer passing. The, <laughs> she, she, the nose knows. They will. Pat's face is yes, like, yeah, I know. Her nose and knows. She's, yeah, yeah. she's all for sustainability. She's like blinking, going, "That's that's a lot. That would be a, oh, a smell in that. You could say that. That's an achievement. That is right? an achievement. That's an achievement. Water tips for the low wash movement. Yeah. Like what? for right now for people if they so, want to start doing this. I run a research test on social media. Steamer is a word that came out a hundred million times. Yeah. So invest in a steamer. I've done the work for you. If you go to done deal to advert, you can buy secondhand ones yeah. that are cheaper even. So yeah. go for a steamer, refresh your clothes, just like ch -ch -ch. And it's brilliant, no dry clean. You can hang them when you're in the shower. Much cheaper. So. Much, oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. You can spot clean. So the good old nail and yeah. spit. I wouldn't go like that about I the whole thing like that, but like a yeah. or whatever. Like I'm that. more thinking of my kids, you know, they are like little <laughs> playful creatures and uh, there's always a bit of, a, you know, a spot here, a yeah. spot there. So just go for that one. And you Wash. can use essential oils inside your washing machine yes. and go at 20 degrees and things. It's just better for the Cold, birds. yeah, low, uh, full loads. That's very important. And, yeah. you know, respect the manufacturer guidelines. There's all those things that you can do. There's so many things you can do. Look at that there. It's yeah, as good as gold. Brian Zabo, founder of Indigo Invitational. Make sure you check it out online. It's amazing to see what happens to the denim over the year. And God bless your wife, Brian. She is a trooper. And Pat Kane, yeah, a sustainability guru. Thank it's you. been a pleasure having you. And people can find you online and look at everything there. Thank you, Thank you. so How about so much. much. Cheers. Uh, we'll be back with you in Ireland AM in just a minute. Welcome back to Thursday's Ireland AM. Yes, we've got loads more on the way for you in the next hour. We certainly do. We're going to be chatting about how many times you wash your clothes, by the way, lads. So you can let us know 0896 yeah. 111111. I'm standing out here outside here in my dirty clothes. I the, They're not. The outdoor light is much more unforgiving to dirty As clothes. <laughs> I'm, if you can spot I'm it. Feel like the jeans. Like, don't zoom in on it. <laughs> Coming up, we are going to be sitting down with Irish TV royalty he owns this show mark cagney uh, is going to be dropping by for a chat at 8 15. yeah no pressure and after nine best-selling author and book book talk yes. sensation rebecca quang will reveal all on her highly anticipated new novel and later on i'm going to be chatting to oscar winner daniel kaluuya as he goes across the spider-verse in the animated box office smash that's all coming up our rumbling tummies are in the capable hands this morning of Edward Hayden. And what's on the menu this morning? Edward, lovely to see you. And likewise, Ray and Warren, I've got a gorgeous salmon pate this morning with uh, a lovely pickled cucumber. So last week I did the coronation chicken wraps and I had a whole lot of people saying that they loved that whole kind of picnic al fresco concept. So I decided to uh, revisit it again I this week. I think Tommy ate 27 of them. Yeah, I think like, he did. He made them that night again <laughs> when yeah, he went yeah, home. I was like, did. all right, Tommy, that sounds absolutely yeah. Delicious. Sounds nice now, the guy Edward's off here in the shorts and flip flops. <laughs> We're all going like this. And over here, our fella's got a puffer jacket on. Derek's in the puffer. Yeah, absolutely, Warren. I cannot believe after two and a half weeks of sunshine, we're back to basics, we're back to cloud cover, we're back to showers later on tonight, into the weekend as well. And I'm looking at you here, you're. <laughs> She's shivering. <laughs> Bring a coat. Bring a yeah, coat. You know, we were talking a little bit earlier on about. Well, there's lots. There's the use by dates and the sniff test for the use by dates, but also the low wash movement. movement. And we're wondering how often you wash your, co uh, your clothes. We're going to put up a little megaphone pole here and you can just scan the QR code. I haven't seen this code. before. How does this work? You is scan it, the QR code there. See right. it there? Okay, go on. So Take out the phone. Right. Scan the QR code. I don't wash myself. Never mind me clothes. You and can I, vote. I just zoom in on the, the code and there it pops up Virgin Media. He watches Ireland and Dan so often, doesn't he? That's very cool, isn't <laughs> it? <laughs> there you go. He's done it right there. Some of your texts on that. Mary says, I wash my sheets every week, sometimes every five days in very hot weather. I wash my clothes after every use. I can't bear people who wear PJs all day and then wear them to bed. But I suffer. 
Now, Mary suffers with hay fever. So in all fairness, it is essential to wash your clothes every morning. I use a quick wash. I'm in my 70s, so if I can do it, everyone can. But people who don't, like for hay fever sufferers, of course you have to wash your clothes because if you're bringing the pollen inside, you'll just be suffering all day. I am a huge hay fever sufferer. Yeah, I, I take my antihistamines every day. I'm all bunged up this morning. But yet how long for the jeans? Maybe it's the genes. Maybe I'm allergic to dirt. <laughs> that could be <laughs> what's happening. <laughs> Maybe that's the problem. But for other people, I wouldn't be washing things after wearing them. That's madness. Not straight away. Well, it depends on the thing. Like, like we were saying earlier on, like uh, if you're wearing something like with a neck, you, you, you've you got makeup on. I know, yeah, you the makeup. You might get the, make, the makeup there. Yeah, that's not going to wash easily necessarily. Uh, similarly with a t-shirt or if you, uh, and, and if you get, if you spill something down it or yeah. you get a little stain. With jeans. Jeans. I, I could go years without washing the jeans. Years. It'd yeah, be it a does horror have hay story. fever. Uh, how often do you wash your clothes? I'm looking at the, uh, the oh, poll numbers. The poll. This is amazing. This is great. You can actually see it in live. <laughs> New and it, it goes up and down once you scan the, the QR code. Can we throw it up there again, lads? This is brilliant. This is the internet now at work. Um, after <gasps> this each is wash, it. 34%, uh, 32% of people are after each wash. Weekly, an awful lot of people are going for. And there's a 4% of dirty buggers like myself that hardly ever. That's all good, James. Go. When denim was developed by Strauss, as in Levi Strauss, they were for miners and cowboys in the American West who would get very few chances to wash them. They were actually meant to go a long time without washing. They certainly were. And David says, I can't believe people don't wash trousers or jeans after a couple of wears. Clothes smell. And particularly on the lower part of your body, says David. David. Thank your pardon, David. How dare you? Uh, you don't have hanging to be outside that the line, uh, like the guy for what, the Indigo uh, Revolution, was it? Indigo? Yeah, Indigo. hanging outside in the line. Also, honestly, when you're having a shower, if you just want a quick refresh, hang up your clothes in the bathroom and the steam will do its work. That's if you're having a shower. <laughs> you're going the whole hog, are you? He's going the whole hog, everybody. 089 6 to get in contact with us with the hard hitting stories this morning. And we're so proud to be doing this, aren't we? We're not embarrassed yeah, over here at all. We spent the last hour doing the sniff test. And then the legend, the man who the studio's named after. Uh, <laughs> Mark Cagney is here. Look at him there. He's like, oh my God, I'm so happy I left this place. Mark, are you delighted to be back? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. We've we'll got a whole interview out of him in a couple We're going to get a sniff test off him. We'll be back in a minute. Haven't done much with the place, have you? <laughs> Look at that moustache. Back with you in a second. <clears throat> <laughs> You're very welcome back to Ireland AM now. Next up is a man who needs no introduction, so we leave it at that. Uh, <laughs> his, Ireland... <laughs> his Ireland AM legacy still lives on. Uh, and can, do you notice that Tommy isn't here? This is the second time this Chicken man has out. been on the couch since myself and Tommy have been working together. He's not here again. Mark Cagney, good morning. How are morning. you? How are you? Is Very he nice. what's going on? Is he What's this he... like? Is... This, this is Today just, FM, isn't it? This is it's today kind of like Today FM. FM. Yeah, mix, Congratulations mix on the gig, by the way. Thanks, man. It's very, very kind of you to say. Since, listen, uh, since you're, you're wearing the same thing as well this morning. We are. It's the uniform. It, well, it's certainly this denim, is the, double this is the, denim. This is the radio. Not graph. many people can carry it off, as you can see. Well, but, well done. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Straight away, straight out of the gate. You were up anyway. You should have come in. I'm only filling in this morning. You should have come in this morning. To and, do it. And, and, and well, welcome back to the. I don't know. Could I actually read? I, yeah, no, I the think you'd be still, fine. Are still working. Yeah, I, I think you'd be yeah. fine. We would have had great fun doing the newspapers this morning. Can we bring up the, the Daily Mail there? Uh, the Irish Daily Mail there. There's a heart in Can a moustache really make a man irresistible? Mark Cagney, look really at that can. for a moustache. It's for a gig. It's for I a gig. I told you, yeah. Santa Claus, Santa's got all on it next number. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the failing that. Uh, uh, oh, look down Colonel that. Sanders. Oh Colonel Sanders. Or yeah. I'd settle for uh, Captain Birdseye. Captain Birdseye, free fish fingers for life. Do you know, actually, <laughs> <laughs> I was, as you know, I had strokes, right? I was in, I was in the middle of COVID and I was in for three weeks. No razors, couldn't get clothes in or out. I mean, it was very strange. Yeah. Um, no, it was brilliant. They were amazing in Beaumont. I came out with this and my wife, Hated it. I mean, hated it. Still hates it. Does she still? And you still? Yes, I lead a very monastic, monastic life these days. But okay. my daughters loved it. Oh, all right, okay. Well, like, no, 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 no. It's, 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 you're like Liam Cunningham, and I went, oh God, I'll take that all day. Oh, now. and now we know where your wife comes in the pecking order. The girls of you've got, you've got the youngest oh, my is life doing is ruled the, by my daughters. But the by youngest the way, is doing the leaving Mary. Mary Boo Boo, baby, is uh, started yesterday morning. How is it? Um, oh, God, it was awful. I actually, I was sick to my stomach because I could see how... Now, by the way, she's the smartest one of the lot. She works like a demon. She's been the top 5% of her class since she was like that high. So she's the one we had the least worries about. But yeah. she was, it was a bit emotional yesterday morning for yeah. everybody. And she was, and you're like, your dad, and you're kind of go, oh, fucking like... 
would a hug make it better? What Probably not. But, you know. yeah. but it's your last as well oh. to go through it, I suppose. Yeah. The way you're like, she's the smartest. The other ones, the others know where they come in the pecking no, order. But, as well, I know, but they? they will all tell you she's the most academic. She has known what she has wanted to do since she was about five. Okay. Drama, stage. So and I went, first. yeah, brilliant. Find what you love. You'll never work a day in your life. Except, of course, most of the people I know are in that business and they spend their time painting houses and <laughs> waiting yeah. on tables. <laughs> really, darling, please. But that's what she wants to do. Yeah. And you're And she's her. already, you know, she's already made progress in that regard. She does voiceovers. She's yeah. done more voiceovers in the last year than I have. Well, a bit of a second there then for the, for, for, for the old man. <laughs> I suppose voiceover work is a little bit easier than, than this because uh, you're on here five mornings a week. Some people only do four. Four. Believe that. It's, five it's mornings a week? Yeah. Uh, and then, because you work on the Sunday as well to get ready for the Monday. That, you that, start on start tea time on Sunday. It, like, it's, that pace was crazy. Three hours a day, five days a week, 11 months a year, 20 years. Uh, if I'd killed somebody, I'd have been free soon. <laughs> <laughs> you would have been no, but it was lovely. And uh, yeah, I get asked this all the time, and I get a, and, and the stock answer, and it sounds like it's trite, but find what you love. Hopefully, with people that you really get on with. Yeah. And then you come okay. into a job where you learn something new every day and you meet somebody new every day. What's not to like? Well, the thing is that you learned here because w one of your very good friends, Alan Hughes, who isn't here, my, my Mr. Hi hypochondriac, who every time <laughs> we have a doctor sitting on the couch, Alan thinks he has what the doctor's talking about and he makes an appointment with the GP immediately. Like there is an Alan-shaped hole in the door and he's gone. Yeah. But when you were sitting on this couch, you, like you were really dragging at, at, in your first two years. We, the, the, uh, as you know, and uh, you've done breakfast radio. Yeah, the early right? morning. So yeah. you, you know what it's like, right? It's a complete lifestyle shift, right? You're getting up at three, four, five o'clock. I got up at three. Yep. Right? And I was in here by half four. Like, your, your sleep patterns are destroyed. You're supposed to be in your deepest REM. Because you had a desk to hide the, the, the bad fake tan. Fair play. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember in the first year or two, like I was, I felt like I'd been hit by a train all the time. Mm. I was exhausted, and you put it down to this. And of course, when you're exhausted, you're irritable, you're cranky. Uh, you know, you, mm. everything is wrong. And there was a doctor. She's passed now, sadly, called uh, Martine Miller Johnson, who was on, and she was talking about menopause and about various other bits and pieces like that. And I talked to her. I escorted her out and said, "Did the usual? Try to get, try to cop a free concentration." Hundred percent. Yeah. The perks said, of the Where do you think Alan learned it? Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, she said, "Well, actually, do you know what? It, it might not just be the hours. It might be something else." She was based in Kilkenny at the time. She said, "Come down and see me." So I went down to see her, and she did a full battery of tests. Yeah. And because she'd worked abroad and she'd worked in the NHS, Scotland in particular, she came back and said, "Very simple blood test. You have a thing called hemochromatosis." And I went, "What?" She said, it's known as the Celtic curse. I said, what? And like, because you're doing this, you're dealing with syndromes and all that yeah. kind of stuff all the time. And I come from a medical family. My grandfather's a doctor. My uncle's a doctor. Mm. Never heard of it. Never been mentioned by any of my GPs. She said, it's, you've got too much iron in your blood. Yeah. I went, no, I have too little. I'm anemic. I get B12 shots. I take iron tonic. She said, yeah, you're poisoning yourself, mate. And I went, what? What's all this about? Uh, she said, listen, come down and we'll talk about it. Anyway, she explained hemochromatosis to me, which is the most common genetic uh, disorder in this country. Right. By far no. Than cystic fibrosis, it's hemochromatosis. Absolutely. Yeah. And we are world's leaders in it. So there's well, one in... So, now, the numbers vary because so few... Well, not enough people have been tested. Yeah. But they reckon between one in five to one in eight have the gene, the single gene, right? Then if that person who has a, the single gene meets somebody else who has this, the single gene, yeah. Yeah. their kids have a one in two chance of having the double gene. And then they're in trouble. I have the double gene. My parents did. Yeah. My mother, actually, funnily enough, all her life believed that she was anemic. Because when I was diagnosed, I had to go back to them. And she said, no, that's nonsense. Are you sure I'm anemic? I've been taking iron tonics all my life. Yeah. Which accounted for... I mean, this is a terrible joke, and my brother told it at her funeral, so I, I think I'm safe enough saying this. Our family joke was, if you wanted to hide something from my mother, put it near the Hoover, because she'd never go near it. <laughs> and we had a family <laughs> joke about her not necessarily being, uh, you know, the ultimate in domestic goddesses. Good woman. But now we know why, right? She was knackered, knackered. all the time. Now, like, eight kids have something to do with that too. Yeah. But no, she physically was knackered. And she was taking iron supplements, which are actually making her worse. Yep. So wh what would you do then instead? Because I suppose it's easy enough to kind of go, I'll yeah. take the iron supplements, I'll feel better as a result. What, what, what did the doctor recommend once you were diagnosed? It's very, very simple, right? 
You go and you get a blood test. You, get, you ask your doctor for a ferritin test next time you visit. And they will do it and then uh, they will tell you how much iron is in your blood, whether it's too high, whether it's too low, whether you have the genetic marker for hemochromatosis. If you do, they go, OK, we'll take you in and you donate blood. And you donate blood. You might have to do it, depending on how high your levels are, you might have to do it two, I had to do it three or four times initially, every yeah. uh, two months. Get the levels down. Then once your levels are down, you maintain. OK. That's and it. that's it. They'll call you back in. I, I, I um, get called into the liver centre in the matter. Yeah. Once a year, they do a check and say, yeah, you're grand. Or no, we we'll take some blood. And then you're grand for another year. But there's a lot of people then walking around in this country who are like, modern Thousands. life is... is is tiring me it's out, the kids, yeah. Thousands, uh -huh. and they literally, it's, they could have hemochromatosis, and it's easily treatable. Easily treatable. Yeah. The problem, real problem with it is, is that when, when, when it becomes a problem, it manifests as something else. So you retain the iron in your body, but different people retain it in different places, yeah. right? It'll lodge in your heart, cardiomyopathy, uh -huh. which will kill you. It'll lodge in your liver, cirrhosis, which will kill you. Have you ever heard of people in this country with cirrhosis and then you find out afterwards, you go, your first instinct is, oh, they drank like a fish. Uh -huh. yeah. Then you hear afterwards, no, they didn't Never touch the drop yeah. going, How can that be? Mm. That's how it can be. Kidneys, pancreas, type 2 diabetes. What have we had in this country with late onset type 2 di diabetes? There's been an epidemic of it, yeah. right? And, and hemochromatosis and its effects, it's a slow build-up. Yeah. So it starts to affect people in their late 30s, early 40s. You know, when you get things like Late onset diabetes. I wonder how, how many type 2 late onset That's diabetes people have been tested for HA. And you can find out more at hemochromatosis.ior.com. Uh, uh, can we put, hopefully we'll put it on screen because it's not the easiest to spell, but you know, autocorrect will actually sort you out with that. You, you're looking fantastic. And we were, you, you know, you've come on, you've talked to us before. You had the two strokes from COVID. You, like you, you've had a lot of health issues and you look great. How are you doing? Well, I, I, I had a lot of brownie points in the bank. Okay. Like, I look it's fairly well documented that, that my first 30 years were uh, mm. reckless, fun. shall we say. Fun, yeah. Fun. And fun. I had a lot of fun and I indulged in a lot of fun and I indulged in a lot of stupid things when I had fun doing that too. Then I grew up. Yeah. And uh, as soon as family arrived, uh, kids arrived, I just went, right, I stopped smoking. I used to smoke 60 a day. I had. Funny enough, I had been quite um, um, active and athletic and sporty when I was younger. Yeah. I went back to that, went back to the gym. So I became a gym bunny. So I replaced b b bad, bad habits with other habits, good yeah. habits. And that put a lot... Of, I mean, I remember actually talking to the doctor at the time saying, but, but they gave me a list of stuff I should do after the strokes. I said, but I've been doing this for 30 years. I've been living like a monk. And he said, well, that won't stop what happened to you. I mean, mm. like you could be Superman and if the little bomb goes off in your head, then it will drop you. But it will help with your recovery. Well, it's great to see you looking so well. So, Good luck with the leaving cert. <laughs> oh, God, this is right. She'll be grand. As long as we know she'll be grand. She just, we need her to believe she'll, she'll be, be grand. Of course, yeah, she'll be brilliant. It's so lovely yeah. to see you inside here. Thank and I'm you. sure there's many people who are watching right now who are just delighted and would wish that we'd flip off and you'd stay here I know for the I rest would. of the time. Would you want to stay? It's fine, exactly. it's all good. Could you take over till 10? It'd be great. <laughs> you would. Mark Hecking, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Get lovely the blood test. You. Go to your doctor, get, get the blood test. It's so simple. Don't walk around with this. If Mark Hackney says it, it's time to do you it. You have to do it, yeah. Pleasure having you here. Oh, look at that, it's so good. Hello, welcome back. It is time, it says here, with the right. sun shining, it's a perfect time for summer snacks. It's a little bit over, uh, overcast on the East Coast at the moment anyway, but I believe around the country we're still uh, some sunny spells. Yes. Uh, Edward Hayden is making his poached salmon pate with pickled cucumber for breakfast this morning and it looks already looks fantastic with the brown bread out and all. Edward, where are we beginning? Yeah, well, listen, it's a really nice recipe. And as I said to you, it's perfect for those kind of al fresco um, requirements for the summer. Uh, yeah. So again, this is a really nice option. So it's a kind of a two or three pronged attack, if you like. So first thing I'm going to show you people how to do is to poach the salmon. So here, very simply, I've just got some salmon. I've just popped it onto a tray. Uh, you're tired listening to me saying, line the tray with baking paper. <laughs> so what you'll spend on parchment paper, you'll say, 
save on Brillo pads. Okay. So um, that's the salmon just like that. I'm going to season that then just lightly with a little bit of black pepper. And also I've got a little bit of salt. So pop that on there as well. Then I'm going to put a few aromatics into the tray as well. Oh, so here what I've got, just to add a bit of flavour, I've just got a couple of wedges of onion. I'll just throw that into the tray with it. Um, I've also got a little uh, bit of water. So put in some water in there as well. And also a little bit of white wine. Now what that does is it allows you to poach it in the oven and it just gives it that real nice sense of moisture. Like so this ban salmon, or something. it's absolutely like a banbury. So okay. it's cooking it in that kind of water bath. And then I've just got some bay leaves. Okay, so not to be mistaken, Taken with bay leaves. Uh, so I'm going to. You've used that in a few Absolutely, a few yeah. Now you said it. So just pop in a couple of the bay leaves as well for our, an aromatic. Now, there's two choices that you have. You can either cover that down. I tend not to cover it because, again, the water will introduce yeah. that little bit of vapour in the oven. So it'll cook it up really, really nicely. So what I do if you there. Do cover, because people might think that with sort of ban marie, yeah, yeah. yeah. you'd have to cover it. Yeah, and it's not a deal breaker if you cover it okay. at all. It just kind of, I suppose, mine is kind of, if you look at my which I have here is one I've made earlier. It's just almost like partially poached, partially roasted. There's a little bit more colour. So if you colour it, it will just be that little bit more uh, anemic. So here what I've got then is I've got the lovely salmon, which I have poached. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flake that in to uh, my bowl. So here we'll take it. And oh, I, yeah, it. perfect. I'm going to just take it. I can't take it. it anymore. I'm sorry. I have yeah, to. She's go going for the bit of brown bread. The bit of brown bread. A glass of gone off milk all morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, there you have it. And you see what I'm doing is I'm just taking all of that off the skin and it's coming off really, really nicely because it's so gently poached. And You're again, not using the skin? I'm not using the skin at all because I want it just the really nice uh, fish in the pate. So pop all of that in and you can see what I'm doing is just flaking that if you like or breaking that up really really nicely okay oh, yeah. so that's and you can see even already as i break it with my hands how moist it is uh, at this very minute in time okay. now what i'm going to do then is i'm going to add a few little bits and pieces to that so um just throw it out of the way i was about to say <laughs> yeah yeah i was going I to eat this i was going to graciously do I it but anyway eaten... would you eat the skin on the salmon yes no well, you yeah. wouldn't because it's not crisp enough you don't eat it if it was crispy it's a bit gooey yeah yeah it was a bit gooey yeah. now in there i'm just I'm going, going to put eating, sniffing one a little now. bit of uh, mayonnaise. I'm also going to put a little bit of sweet chilli jam. Uh, you remember last week I used a bit of mango chutney. So if people have gone out and bought the mango chutney, put in a bit of mango chutney with the mayonnaise instead. This is for the coronation, chicken, for chicken, the coronation yeah. chicken. And it would be absolutely gorgeous there as well. So that's the option that you've got uh, around that. The other option here that I have is a little bit of shallot. Okay, so I've just put a little bit of diced shallot uh, in there very finely. And the final thing then is a little bit of the lemon juice. Okay. Lovely. So just give my lemon a little roll and put some lemon juice in there. Now, again, uh, guys, people might decide at home to put lots of other bits and pieces into it. They might decide to use cream cheese instead or a little bit of yogurt instead of the mayonnaise. They also might decide to put some chopped herbs. They might uh, bulk it up with a little bit of diced fresh chilli. Some fennel would be lovely in there as well. But that essentially is our lovely uh, salmon pate. So we'll assemble that gorgeous. in just a moment. Uh, in the meantime, what I've got is I've just been warming my pan here for the purposes of the telly. Oh. So here what I've got is I've got some white wine vinegar. So I'm just going to pop some white wine vinegar in there. So you can see I've well warmed it. Oh my gosh. And it's into that. that warm. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of sugar in there as well, because I want that liquid to come to the boil. I want there to be yeah. a boiling liquid. Now, meanwhile, then back at the ranch, so I'm just going to pop that up there now, and that should just come to the boil. And whilst I'm waiting for that, I'm just going to take a lovely cucumber and I'm just going to peel the ribbons of cucumber just down really nicely. And again, you can see I'm including a little bit of skin yeah. in each piece as well. Now, I'm not getting um, down to the seeds, but I will tell people if they want it now, a little treat. Can I tell you at this hour of the morning, with any of this cucumber seeds that are left, if you wanted the most refreshing little option, you could pop that into a food processor with a big handful of ice and a nice good slurp of gin and uh, give oh. that a blend down <laughs> and you've got like a little cucumber and gin slushy. We you just, know, we, it's like for a lovely so, adult party. So you'll be blending the seeds then? You're and blending the, the seeds. seeds be broken up in the blender? Absolutely. The okay. seeds, the gin and the ice. And it's really just like a little gin I, and I cucumber. Seems to be very no, slushy. I just, I just love that this is where the questions have come. We mentioned gin and Ray is like, okay, hold on, let's break this down. <laughs> Hello, Edward. <laughs> let's break this down. Now, there we have it just like so. So meanwhile then, what I've got is I've got some a little bit of diced red onion. You could 
put a little bit of diced red chilli in there as well if you want it. Yeah. And then what I've got is I've just brought this mixture of the vinegar and the sugar to the boil. That's and when it's really hot, I'm going to pour that on the top. And I'm just going to let that to macerate for a couple of hours or to soak in for a couple of hours. And you can see the result of the mixture like this. that I have last night. Love it that. becomes exactly like this. So that's a really, really nice option, just like so. And then what I'm going to do is I just reach over here and I've got some of left. the bread. That's There's a bit of the brown bread there. And I'm going to put some of our lovely salmon pate. So if I just make a little quenelle, just to be very posh, just like so, you can just make oh little quenelles like that. So I'll just do a quenelle on one and I'll just slap it on slap the rest. Slap it on the other. You can slap it. We'll have it for um, the visitor. And again, that's really, really nice. And then I'm just going to embellish the top of that with a wee little bit of cucumber. Now, if the brown bread wasn't your fancy, think of doing this a little bit um, not dissimilar to, um, you know, like a little prawn cocktail. So you could do it in a glass. You could put a little bit of shredded Lovely. lettuce on the bottom. Just his time you you um i'm just gonna try this this is absolutely oh, gorgeous try before we go so a little bit of shredded lettuce on the bottom some of the salmon on the top and it would be gorgeous but it's just really really refreshing a really nice oh, light you? fresh start i'll have mine during the break uh, with a little glass of wine to go would be <laughs> great. Uh, you can find the oh, thank you very welcome Edward, thank you so much yes very welcome. fantastic and Delicious. after the break we meet the illustrator of a new children's book which takes a closer look at dwarfism celia ivy will be telling us about her story in a few minutes we'll see you back here very shortly Welcome back. Now, our next guest is an illustrator who collaborated with the wonderful Owen Colfer on his latest children's novel, which tells the story of a little girl growing up as a person with dwarfism. Here to talk about the book and her own experiences as a little person is Celia Ivy. Celia, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning. morning. Thanks Lovely for having me. Uh, tell us about the book and the, the story of, the, of Owen's uh, story in the book. So the um, story germinated. It's Owen's... Owen um, wrote it. Okay. And um, so he was on tour doing his book and he met a little girl with dwarfism and that's where he got he got talking to his her mother and um, obviously with one of his Artemis Fowl books. And um, yeah, no, he, uh, he, he got the idea after talking to his mother, after, after talking to her mother about um, how she was getting on. And yeah, she happened to have a sibling that was old, like younger than her mm. but started to overtake her in height and i think that's when the little girl realized that she had dwarfism and i think that's what really stuck with owen and so when he was looking to make the story he uh, we, we worked with little island bo um, publishing books and um they like seeked out a illustrator who had dwarfism which is a you know obviously a crowd of one yeah so i said i said uh, i think i could <laughs> you're like i'm stick. the right one for the I job think right. i think you i can take my place come on yeah 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 and uh, yeah so i well, i did a try, a try out with them and i i i i went to university to study illustration mm. and graphic design and so i was it's just kind of like a lovely opportunity that just came to my lap and I thought, well, hey. Well, it's almost like kismet, but it's it's beautiful. Your drawings are absolutely gorgeous. And Thank we all know much. the mind of Owen Colfer is just brilliant. Like, yeah. you know, it, 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 he can go to any realm. But we're going to be speaking later in the show to another author about sort of sensitivity reading and, you know, appropriation of people's cultures and their lives. Yeah. So how did you feel about someone, you know, as a little person, about someone else writing this story who well, doesn't live with dwarfism? What's... It's a fictional story, yeah. and what's really nice about it, with a fictional character, I can bring my lived experience. So, it, like, Owen is a natural storyteller. Like, he can, together, I can bring my, my, the accuracy of my lived experience to him, yeah. and he can sew together something that is quite well balanced, where it's like, it touches onto some real kind of moments that do happen like you know visits to hospital because it is a medical condition yeah. and obviously there's a responsibility there to try and make like the character very dignified and you know and and come from a loving family and and like and obviously look like everyone who feels like a bit of a misfit look within yourself to you know succeed in what actually you're good at and not what you're you know happen to look like or born with it's uh, a, it's lovely. It's lovely. Was it? Gorgeous did book. he already have it written uh, before the approach, or did you have an involvement? Did you like? Were you able to contribute some of your own lived experience with? 
Yeah, so he 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 gave it a go, and um, well, he had his he, had, he did have his own story, and I said, look, what well, I think this would be more accurate if right. we did it this way and displayed her this way, yeah. and then just to get a just a real authentic feel to it, which I think is um, in this day and age, I think is really really important. Uh, yeah. We just saw Sinead Burke, uh, who is also a little person. She was on the cover of Vogue magazine. Oh, yeah. She's a contributing editor. Um, and Fantastic visibility one. is changing. Yeah. How do, how do you feel as a little person living in this world? What is it like? We're living in a time where it's just moving in the best direction. Yeah. Obviously, we're not there yet. There's still things that need to happen with accessibility. Sinead, obviously, is a trailblazer. She's like completely shining a light on and really trying to get accessibility, you know, seen to yeah. for, uh, universally, which is, I mean, it's it, it caters for me. It's it, all disabled people need, you know... To be able to live in the world in which they live in. Yeah, you know, absolutely. It's... And to just have representation of, yeah. and, and fictional characters that are just... You know, people like you, if, if someone to yeah. present a show or be a teacher or be a doctor, to, just to be seen doing do, doing those things and have it be, that be normal. I think it's a, I'm really, really glad to be living in yeah. this time. And I suppose it's so important as well for uh, children with dwarfism to be, I suppose the book speaks to that. It's called yeah. uh, Little Big Sister. Uh, about it's lovely. The it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's beautiful. Uh, it's by Owen Colfer and Celia Ivey has done the illustrations, which are absolutely beautiful. Celia, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so pleasure. much, Celia. Cheers. Uh, we've got another busy hour on the way. Oscar winner Daniel Kaluuya will be checking in. And on the catwalk, we have some of styles to take you absolutely anywhere, maybe even maybe, to Harry Styles. Maybe not here. Maybe, maybe not, <laughs> but not, these, not these styles. That's, co that's coming up. Plus, with her new novel delving into the subject of co cultural appropriation, as we just mentioned, best-selling author Rebecca Kwong is here to tell us more. And we'll see you shortly. Good morning. You're very welcome back. If you're just joining us, you've missed some great, you've missed a great show already, seriously. But we've got a great hour left. From A-listers to bestsellers, we've loads still to come for you this morning. We certainly do. On the way, he starred in everything from Get Out to Black Panther. We're going to be chatting to Oscar-winning actor and star of Across the Spider-Verse, Daniel Kaluuya, about playing the webbed wonder and working with, sure, I'll throw in a question about Michael Fassbender, will I? That looks so cool. That, 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 uh, I haven't seen it yet. I saw the first one, that's brilliant. Yeah. Uh, we'll also be talking thrillers and TikTok with a New York Times best-selling author whose new novel is one of the most talked about books of the year. It certainly is. And on the catwalk, bye, Ray. Bye. I'm going to see you later. Like walk and talk. On the catwalk, we have stylist Lorna Waitman Hi. is here with us. Hello, Lorna. What's Good on morning. the agenda this morning? Um, this morning, we're going to talk about editor-recommended pieces for summer. Oh. So, from the likes of Vogue to Hello to Grazia magazine, I've gone through all of them and picked out some of the essential bits that they all recommend. And this one is all about the oversized denim shirt, yeah. which is a really big thing. It's, it's kind of come back and is going to stay, I think, a little bit, and an alternative way to wear denim. So I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to get these kind of key pieces, like capsule items, into your wardrobe for the Lovely. summer. Lovely. And then we don't have to wash it for a year because it's <laughs> denim. See, the show is all connected this morning. We were talking about that earlier on. Uh, so looking forward to that. This week on Ireland AM, we're celebrating Virgin Media rolling out its two gig full fibre broadband to more homes across Ireland. Virgin Media have teamed up with Rambling Rover to give away a two week five star luxury camper van trip in Ireland with add ons included for the ultimate premium experience. Explore Ireland's beautiful scenery by luxury camper van with ramblingrover.ie. Virgin Media's two gig full fibre broadband is now available to more people than ever before. So check out virginmedia.ie for more information. And for your chance to win this prize, just answer the following question. Which is the largest county in Ireland? Is it A, Cork, or B, Waterford? To enter, simply call 1550-999-319 or text TRIP to 57199. Best of luck. Best Thank of luck. You. Best of luck. Now, earlier on, we were talking about the low wash movement, where they're asking people to wash their clothes less in order to, you know, save the planet. And we're asking you to take part in our poll. How often do you wash your clothes? Look at those after each use. 36% after each use. Weekly, 62%. Monthly, 0%. And hardly ever 
Hello. Is that Ray? I'm not you saying, took part lads, in the poll. No, is that this you? is ridiculous. I'm being misrepresented here. I'm not saying I don't wash my clothes. <laughs> what I'm saying is there are some pieces. There are some essential pieces. <laughs> <laughs> that, the notion that I would have pieces of clothes. Pieces of clothing. He's got a cap uh, jeans, collection. The jeans don't need to be washed. I suppose that's what we're talking about most earlier now, on. Noel jeans. says you should be washing your clothes after every wear. No, but not your jeans, Noel. Cop pot yourself. People you take will. showers every day to wash your body. It's no different than that. All of your body's fluids and bacteria are in contact with your clothes. But your underwear. Yeah. Yeah. You change your underwear every, like, two weeks. But I'm just sitting there. If I'm More sitting there wearing like. a blazer every two weeks, <laughs> is that inside and out? Do you do the well, four Well, I flip times? them around, yeah. yeah. Back to front. Seven, day, seven days in, seven days out. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you're enjoying your breakfast this morning. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> uh, Jill, I'd love to watch clothes. I'd love to leave them. Uh, but they start to smell and get visibly dirty after a couple of wears. What else are we supposed to do? We can't go around in dirty clothes either if there's Put an alternative the to washing. Put them outside on the line. Fresh air is what they say, unless it's raining, of course. Spot which cleaning. Is spot clean and you have the, this little and scrape it off with the nail. So, like the mother right. taking out the tissue from there to wipe your face. When or I learned to hack years ago on the six o'clock show, the, old, um, the baby wipes. If you've got a little, uh, couple of little uh, marks, yeah. sort that out before you go on the camera, you'd be grand. Yeah, they're not best for the environment, but sure, it's grand, isn't it? It's fine. I get environmentally friendly baby wipes. There we go. Get an environmentally friendly baby. But if you're sitting down in front of the TV, you could do your spot cleaning. No one's going to do that, though, <laughs> yeah. aren't they? Look at Sitting down to watch Succession, I'm just going to spot clean my Hang clothes. Hang on, that's gone I'm up doing. now. They hardly ever. My crowd are beginning. We're, we're, uh, <laughs> we're showing a good... <laughs> up nine. We're growing. We're up to nine now. Come on, lads. <laughs> you're fighting. I swear to God. Ten. It's, it's more exciting than the Grand National, isn't it? Is Watching exciting. the megaphone. This is very exciting stuff. Go up Paddy Power was opening a book on us in, uh, in uh, a couple of minutes. A we were also talking about food expiry, and Barbara says, some expiry dates aren't accurate. I don't like to risk it when it comes to meat. I find sometimes it can smell a bit off, even before the use-by date, because we're talking about best befores and use-by dates. Uh, so I follow them in that case. Most items can be determined by smelling it. Yeah. Isn't there a thing? I do that with the chicken all the time. We should have, was Can't it Gavin, wasn't it Gavin we were speaking to earlier on, the sniffer on yeah. TikTok. Uh, this is Gavin, he's a Gavin Wren. Uh, Gavin Wren. He was uh, telling us about uh, uh, he, he, how he will sniff and how he determined whether food has gone off or not. Isn't there a thing about the gas that they use in some of the meats that when you smell it, you go, well, that smell's gone off, but it's the particular gas that's used to preserve the meat. So even if it's within date, but I'm not encouraging anyone to, particularly when it comes to meat, better safe than sorry. Uh, and follow the dates. But when it comes to milk, Gavin was saying it could last up to six weeks. I think we're going to need to Google that. Let's it's let's the gas. Check, let's Someone's it watching that knows exactly what I'm talking about. They will. Text us in. What's the text you know? 0896 111 one. And as Sarah says, almost everything can be frozen for months. So like, oh, they'll yeah. be well after they're used by date. So there's no reason to be throwing things out at all until they're ready to be eaten. And fair play to you. Use Dead your, right uh, is what you think. Use your dates properly. Best before uh, and, and what was the other... Uh, Best before and, and used by. by. Yeah, they're the two. And we will find out about that gas thing because we don't know what we were just saying there. I, I'm telling you, it's a thing I read. The smell of the gas will fool you into And if you read it, yeah. right, you saw a TikTok about it, so it has to be true. Poll, set up a poll. <laughs> uh, coming up after the, after the break. Scan the barcode. Tell me I'm right. Coming up after the break, New York Times bestselling author Rebecca F. Kwong joins us in the studio. Don't go anywhere. We're back after these. <laughs> You've gone mad with the poll. Very welcome back. Now, our next guest is a New York Times best-selling author whose most recent book takes on questions of racism, diversity and cultural appropriation. And, and then it's like this crazy thriller that's going on as well and you want someone to get caught out or will they get caught out? Here to talk to us about her novel, Yellowface, is author Rebecca F. Kwong. Rebecca, good morning. How are you? It's lovely to have you here. Good morning. I'm great. Thanks for having me. Those are huge topics to be discussing in a book and then at the the centre of it, to have a sort of a thriller, like a, a thriller, which is what it is. So can you tell us, first of all, for people who might know what the what the meaning of the word yellow face is and what the book is about? Sure. So yellow face comes from theatre. It's a term for a practice in which white actors use makeup and wear certain clothes to appear Asian when they're not. And it was very controversial on Broadway because there are opportunities being denied to Asian actors mm -hmm. who would have suited those roles better. Um, and it's morphed over time to generally indicate when somebody pretends to be Asian which is a lot more common than we would think, um, but doesn't have any 
obviously any Asian heritage or family. Um, and there have been a few hoaxes of a literary yellow face over the last few years. Quite a lot of white writers will assume Asian pen names or Asian monikers um, because they think that their work wouldn't get published otherwise. And I'm very curious why in industries where statistics prove over and over again that it is overwhelmingly in your favor to be white, why, does it, why is it that people see some perceived advantage in pretending to be from a marginalized background? Um, wow, that's fascinating. Fascinating. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah. And, and I, I suppose, uh, and then you, you've, it's, it's part of the, it's, it's a subject in the book, uh, that's also a, a thriller. It's a page-turning uh, thriller. The, the book is itself. Uh, tell us a, a little bit. Well, without giving too much away, can you, can you give us a little bit of the plot, but without spoiling it for us? Sure, it's a it's a completely demonic book, and they had a lot of Perfect. fun working on it. Um, but it's uh, it's about two frenemies. They're both writers, June, who's white, and Athena, who's Chinese American. And Athena's career has just taken off. She's a bestseller. All of her books have done so well. She's getting film deals. June's first book came out. Nobody really cared about it. Mm. She's she's quite jealous and resentful. And and Athena's very obnoxious about it too. She's not kind about rubbing her success into June's face. So. One night, they're hanging out at Athena's apartment, and Athena chokes and dies on a pancake. Um, and this is when you can tell this was my pandemic, like, goblin mode novel. <laughs> um, and, you know, so she, she exits stage left, and June finds her unpublished manuscript about Chinese laborers on the front during World War I, and decides to pocket it and take it home, complete it, and submit it under her own name. Mm. And the novel comes out and is very successful, and June, at the same time, is pretending to have Chinese Chinese American heritage to seem like more of an authentic, qualified author of this okay. story. Yeah, she goes around creating a character to make it more authentic. And every single time that you're, I have to say that the death scene, you're not giving anything away, it happens earlier on. It's very funny, like how it happens with the pancake and the eating and they're drunk, obviously. Um, but you haven't made characters that are likeable. You know, you kind of sit there and you do want to punch June in the face continually over and over again. And everything that she's doing is odious to take away the experience of someone who is an Asian American and to whiteify it, essentially. I loved writing June's character. I had a lot of fun sitting in her head and people keep asking me, was it difficult to think from the perspective of someone who's so nasty? Yeah. But for me, I found it really cathartic because I've met a lot of Junes in the industry. And I, I, my really? first book came out in 2018 and mm. for the last five years, I've dealt with people telling me that diversity is a trend, that I'm only interesting because I'm exotic and different, that if, if I weren't you know, a checkbox, like Asian American, like diversity higher than nobody would care about my stories. And it's obviously irrational and delusional and ridiculous, but it felt good to finally take all of that negativity and, and also June's internalized voice, because when you've heard that for so many years, you, you start believing it a little bit in yourself. Um, and it, it felt so good to take that and kind of shake her by the shoulders and force her to explain herself and lay out her thoughts in black and white on the page. So yeah, yeah I had a great time with her. And is, would that be reflective, I suppose, your, what you've put in the book, would that be reflective of the industry uh, in general, uh, that, that you, you, aside mm. from your own experiences, would you, would you feel that, that, that the publishing industry, like this is a huge problem in the industry? I think there are lots of problems with the publishing right. industry and all sorts of creative sectors. Um, and to sum it up briefly, I think it really hasn't figured out how to talk about racial difference or to talk about its its BIPOC authors. And, and part of the problem is that when we do have very successful authors who are not white, they're put in boxes and they're yeah. pigeonholed, right? And they're not treated as storytellers whose works are universally appealing and interesting and have something to say to everyone. They're rather marketed as, you know, this is our niche black author. This is our niche Asian American okay. author. And part of the argument in Yellowface is that this very reductive understanding of racial identity and and, and the commodification thereof is, is a disservice to everyone, writers and readers alike. And the thing is, with with books, and as we can see, like for a while there, it was like people aren't reading books anymore. That That's out the window. Like people are reading like never before. And there's been sort of... Uh, the democratization of book reading because it's been taken into the hands of book talk essentially it's become so incredibly powerful but what book talk book talk <laughs> tiktok it's, it's 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 a genre on tiktok and it's just all books uh, it's all discussion of books discussion of right, books okay. it's like book clubs people, and recommendations um 
And your last book, Babel, my God, like it was huge on book talk. You've sold so many copies of this. As you're talking about your industry in this way, how are people in the industry taking it? Because you're taking a microscope and going, this is, I'm not afraid of you. I want to say what I want to say, and this is how you are treating people. How are they reacting? Well, I'll say quickly about book talk. Uh, I don't think that authors should be on book talk. I think that it's a reader's space, right? And it yeah. feels authentic when readers are recommending books to each other. And publishers are always encouraging authors to make TikToks and try to get in on that. But I, I think it comes off as very corporate and disingenuous. Um, so, so the way I think about book talk is like if the fairy blesses you and suddenly you're book is popular and book talk, it's just something to be grateful for. Okay. Otherwise you can't engineer it, but yeah. So book talk is like a fun, unpredictable, scary space. That's what's gonna happen um, there, yeah. As for the for industry response, I've been really surprised. Um, my agent was terrified of putting this book on submission. She actually discouraged me from sending it out when I showed her the first hundred pages because an agent's job is to protect your career and make sure that you you can write books over a sustained yeah. period of time. And she, she was so afraid that this book was going to burn precisely the bridges that I needed to to preserve if if I wanted people to keep giving me book deals. Um, and, and then I really insisted and I said, I feel quite strongly about this story. I, I think it needs to be told. Can we please put it on submission? And, and she's still my agent because even when she was scared of the project, she still believed in me. And I've been really pleasantly surprised by the response on the editorial side. Um, wow. isn't, isn't it, isn't it interesting though that even she, her view was yeah. like, don't, don't put this forward for submission that even that that's an indicator of the mm. of the state of the industry um yeah. uh, very quickly um uh, babel was, was a fantasy novel the poppy wars trilogy are political epics yeah yellow face is a thriller you're not scared to dabble or to you, you won't be pigeonholed you won't be pinned down is there anything you won't touch rom-coms really no you'd be I... so good at this <laughs> Well, I think we end up writing what we enjoy reading most at the moment. And I read very broadly, but the one genre that seems unable to stick with me is rom-coms. I have so many friends who love rom-coms and are always recommending them. And I'm just like, I don't get the appeal. <laughs> I'm just me. not the ideal writer. Like something's just not clicking. I think the other problem is that my dad is my first reader and he's read all of my books carefully. He loves to offer comments on where I've gotten the physics wrong uh, because he did physics. And <laughs> But the thought of writing like intimate scenes and having his eyes on them is so squeamish Just weird, to me. dad. Yeah. <laughs> I, so love I think it. that's I can't like watch, an internal I can't I've seen a pretty woman with my dad. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing <laughs> no, it. That's why my characters like don't even kiss on the page. No. Because I know my dad's going to be like, mm. There was one moment where it was like, she th th where you got so, I, she thought I was going, it looks like she's going to kiss me and then it just stops immediately. <laughs> you, uh, we're currently doing in Ireland our state examinations, the final one before people go on to college and, and university. You're currently in Yale. You've done Cambridge. You've done Oxford. You've been to so many prestigious colleges. Your parents must just be taking out your degrees at every dinner party, are they? Oh, they're they're actually very chill about it. Are they? Um, no, they, I, I feel lucky in that I was never pressured to chase prestige and success for the sake of prestige and success, but rather my dad didn't get to study literature and history because he tested into college due to physics and, and they never let him switch departments. So he's always just encouraged this love of reading and thinking about stories and writing stories in me. So they're just really happy I get to do what I love. And and there's some nice accolades that have come on the side, but but they don't emphasize that. They emphasize doing work that I feel is important and that I'm passionate that's so, about. Uh, that's so lovely and so, so lovely. important and worth noting for anyone uh, heading off to do day two of the Leaving Cert this morning as well. Prestige and success are not the be all and end all. Just uh, just be yourself and live your life. Uh, fantastic book. It's called Yellow Face. Uh, Rebecca, thank you so much for joining us this morning. There it is. We're in the there garden. it is. Shall it already. Honestly, fast paced thriller and you are going to want to punch June in the face. But continually keep on seeing what she's going to be doing. Rebecca, thank you so much for joining us. Huge congratulations on Thanks. Going from season to season and creating new wardrobes can be stressful, so why not start with some basics from jumpsuits to dresses? Stylist Lorna Waitman has top tips for your summer staples. Hello, Lorna. It's lovely to have you here. It's lovely to be here. Um, what we're going to do now, we're going to take a look at, we've got, you've got um, inspiration we do. from we the do. old Instagram. And our first look is um, Irish Queen. 
is Irish Queen and my very good friend Louise Cooney, who yes. looks absolutely stunning in red. And I saw this on her Instagram a while back and I was like, that's how to style a jumpsuit. So a lot of the editors and a lot of the magazines are recommending kind of summer essentials at the moment. Yeah. And one of which is the jumpsuit. And I actually think it's probably one of the most terrifying things to, to try and get in your wardrobe because the fit is really important and comfort is really important as well. Yeah. So this one is just gorgeous for it's a couple lovely. of reasons. If you can see how beautifully it falls, yeah. right? Not only is it that bright, bright red, which is actually really popular for spring, summer, it has wide strap. So if you need to wear a bra, you can fit that underneath it. Square neckline, really flattering. So you can accessorize to your heart's content. Yeah. And then you've got seams down the front to give it a bit of structure. And then it billows out in a wide leg. So it's elongating. I love anything with a belt. You can tie in and just give you a little bit yeah. more definition. And it separates the jumpsuit out. And this one is from Vava Voom, and it's just cut beautifully. So if you want to get a jumpsuit into your wardrobe, these are the kind of proportions to look for. So Lovely. a little bit fitted and a little bit of volume. And we've glammed this up a little bit to give it a bit of a 70s kind of feel. And Love the Perspex heels. Are aren't great. they great? Yeah. Because it makes you look like you're tall, but you're floating. Yeah, it's really <laughs> and cool. And these are also from Vava Voom as well. And red and gold are like the perfect marriage in terms of colour. And it does look very 70s. So we've gone gold with the bag, gold with the earrings, gold with the shoes. And actually jumpsuits have become an awful lot more popular as a wedding or occasion. I know, aren't they great? Aren't they amazing? Oh, they're, they're also brilliant. light as a feather. So they don't have like, they're not going to drag your ears down either. Sarah, so. your ears just look so comfortable. <laughs> She's got very pretty ears this morning. Sarah's got great ears. Uh, so it looks, it has that gorgeous kind of retro effect. And I think when you're going to go for any kind of accessory with red, gold is the way to go. Yeah. Because red is a cold tone and the gold is slightly warmer. So they two kind of balance out really nicely as well. So it's a very oh, affordable, cool. but really, really practical way of wearing a jumpsuit. I I love it. I, those earrings. Those Aren't they earrings. great? 450. Unbelievable. I might now, give our, them to you. Our, our, next <laughs> look, our next look. Our next look. Sarah looks too good with them on. Um, our next look, we're going to have a look at it right here. This is our tailoring. This look. is tailoring. So the suit has moved out of the office yeah. quite a lot. Now, this one you're seeing is a three piece suit, which you can, it's actually a very practical way to do tailoring because you can wear it in so many different ways. Yeah. So you can leave the jacket off, wear the waistcoat if you want to, or you can wear them all as separates. And that's what I do yeah. love about a suit. So Kelly is kind of rocking the summer version of this. So you'll notice that the cut of this is totally different than what you might assume a suit to be, yeah. which can be quite formal and structured. So this one is like a linen mix, so it just falls so beautifully. It's super lightweight as well, so it's great for this kind of time of the year. So you can layer up. It's got beautiful wide leg trousers. Yeah, I love how wide those are. Aren't they are super, super wide, yeah. which I particularly love as well. And then just by going with a cotton tee underneath it, you create this really casual look for tailoring yeah. which tends to be quite formal so it can just show how versatile tailoring can actually be and um, the t-shirt as well if you're going for a t-shirt look for something that is 100% cotton because it will last you and last you and last you and wash really well too but also you can break up this suit if you want to so you don't have to wear them all together but the pinstripe is very subtle you'll yeah. notice that so it's not a print that's going to overpower and um, but really it's about the fabric and the balance of the look the wide leg trouser I I think is something that we've seen an awful lot of. It's not going to go away. And um, these are super wide, but they're also lovely and light. Yeah. So they're great for holidays. So I've actually put them with just a flat slider shoe to show you don't always have to wear a heel yeah. with your suits. You can totally casualize the look. And then if you want to dress it up, you can put on like a really, really good stiletto. And also, you know, if you, if you want to kind of create a little bit of length, when you're going for a wide leg trouser, just make sure the seam of the trouser kind of hits halfway down the heel of your shoe. So you're okay. not kind of letting the suit wear you. Lo yes, because that is my issue sometimes. Yes. Wide leg trousers. Too much fabric. A hundred percent. That's we're, a great one. We're gonna look at our third look for today, and this is the oversized shirt trend. The, the oversized shirt, and in particular, denim. Mm. So this kind of look has stemmed from a lot of um, catwalk trends from maybe a couple of seasons ago and it's hung around. So we've got the likes of, let's say, Celine really like pushed this kind of denim yeah. look and the high street have, have kind of interpreted that. This one is great because it's a heavier, thicker denim. So we're not just talking about summer wear, we're talking about all season wear. Yeah. Um, and it's really dark denim as well, which I think is easier to wear rather than a light wash denim, which can kind of be associated with warmer months. Yeah. So you've got a lot more longevity in this. And this one is from On Trend and it's 49.95. And it's really beautifully cut. It's really, yeah, it Isn't is. Isn't it? it really so it's is. almost like a jacket and not necessarily 
necessarily a shirt. And that's the thing, you'll be wear, you can wear it over jumpers. Exactly, you can wear it over a lightweight knit as we 100%. get a little bit cooler, but I've just gone with a really nice, another 100% cotton tee as well. And the fall of this t-shirt is beautiful. It just kind of, it's a lighter yeah. weight fabric. So it's great for as a layering t-shirt. And then with cargo pants, rather than going for denim, which we kind of default to, the cargo trouser, is another kind of Instagram editor trend we've seen a lot of. But what's are a nice fit. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly it. They're a slim fit. So it looks more like a cigarette pants, kind of tapered trouser rather than something that has more fabric. And there's an elasticated bottom on them as well. So you can kind of adjust that if you want to. Yeah. So if you want to wear them higher, you could. And I've put them with some high heels just to kind of jazz it up from pennies as well. And they actually, they're padded at the top of them. So super nice comfortable. Audrey, they're yes. lovely on you. It's a great, a great look. look. I think it's a Gorgeous. great look. And very kind of kind of utilitarian, but at the same time, very, very it's practical lovely. and relatable. Absolutely gorgeous. Now we're going to look at our next trend and the next trend, uh, I think for Terry, who's it? We've got Terry McAvoy. There we who's, go. I, who I love, and I love her Instagram as well. And Terry always has a really great selection of holiday dresses. Yes. And this is why I chose this. The floral patterned dress always looks great. And this is from one of her Instagram posts. The floral dress is, I think I'm kind of probably repeating myself by saying, Every wardrobe should have a floral dress. Absolutely. And it's a less intimidating print as well. Yeah. There's lots of designer references for this, like Erdem, a, a massive champion of florals. But a couple of things to look out for when you're buying a dress like this. Long sleeve is great because you will wear it an awful lot more. Um, elasticated waist, so you can adjust where it sits along your torso. Yeah. And a little bit of midi length, so you've got versatility with what shoe you're going to wear with it. Yeah. And I always feel a slit actually just it it opens it up. It glamorizes it. Yeah. I think it's really, really it's lovely. Gorgeous. So this is lovely. This is from Vavavoom as well. It's got little subtle buttons along the front as well. And you'll see the little seam at the back. That's elasticated, yeah. which I think is just a brilliant, brilliant suggestion. And the gladiator sal sandals, like you can go heel with it. Of course, you're going to get a lot of wear out of those yeah, sandals. You are. And what's great about these kind of look, these kind of particular sandals are very dressy for holidays. Yeah. So if you're going very casual, you just add in a gold flat sandal, automatically changes everything. Yeah. So the balance of this look is actually lovely. You would think, oh, I'll automatically go with a heel. But the sandal, I think, just creates a really lovely contrast. It's gorgeous. And accessory wise, we're playing on the floral motif there. You'll see the little floral details. That's kind of complementing the flowers and the dress. So all those little subtle things can really like I just lift a look, but I think this is great as well. It also folds up to be super tiny if you're going away, which is also great. Lovely, fold up into the bag. Yeah, and you can fold it into that little bag there, it would fit in perfectly. Um, and another little bag, which is great. So all of these pieces are focusing on not just summer, but kind of a little bit more longevity. And they're all multi-wear as well, and really affordable too. You just do great stuff for us. Ah, it's brilliant. I've been badgering her before this. Being like, Laura, you know the way you're pregnant. Can you do pregnant? how to how to dress when you're pregnant? Because I love what you're doing on your Instagram. Thank you so Lauren much. Lauren Awaken, thank you so much. Thank Thank you, pleasure. And now coming up next, I'm chatting to Daniel Kaluuya, star of the critically acclaimed Spider-Man animation sweeping at the box office. We'll see you back here very shortly. Oscar-winning actor Daniel Kaluuya is taking on the Spider-Verse in his new movie. Let's take a look. There's an elite society with all the best spider people in it. Yeah, last week, Hobie and I. Wait, wait who, who's Hobie? Hi, my name's Obi, Obi Brown. I'm not a role model, I was briefly a runway model. I hate the AM, I hate the PM, I hate labels. How are you even cooler under your mask? I was just cool the whole time. Daniel Kaluuya, thank you so much for joining us now. Of course, Marvel fans, they love Hobie Brown, who was also Spider-Punk. So before signing up, were you a fan? Yeah, no, I didn't. Really, I wasn't really aware of him. I wasn't really exposed to him. I can't even lie to you. I wouldn't, I wouldn't lie to you. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it came to me, and I was like, all right. And I, and I got into him through comics. I got him through the comics. So I was like, oh wow, like this guy's really cool. Let me take him in. I started doing my research, and I seen his world. I was like, oh wow. And then like the character, you said he's the character from Camden. I'm from Camden. I was like, oh, I could do that. I just love that. Oh my god, the fans are going to be like, he didn't know who Hobie Brown was. Oh my god. I didn't know who Spider-Punk was. Obviously, I was aware of Hobie Brown and the backstory with Prowler and all that kind of stuff, but, like, Spider-Punk, I hadn't been exposed to. Daniel, you have won every major acting award that there is. You're also a huge collaborator when it comes to dividing a character on set. So, what's it like having to go into that sound booth and being like, OK, look, at no one's there. Let's make this happen. Is it fun? It's fun. Scary, but fun. I mean, it's not like uh, you don't have anything. Like, you don't read the script. You ain't got the script because they're still figuring it out. You, 
you, you, it's a new character, you're not really dressed as a character, you're not in the environment, you're like, the animation's kind of half done, so it's, everything is kind of like, you're basically putting a lot of trust into your team, you know what I mean, like, that you're working with and you're building with, like, Kemp and Chris and Phil, so it's just kind of like bouncing off, but they gave me a lot of space and freedom to do what I want on this, so it's, I appreciate them. So that's really interesting, because often you think when it comes to animated films, it's all sort of done and you just have to read the words. And with you being a creator yourself, you've been writing since you were, what, nine years old. Did you get to put your own personality into the part more? Yeah, I think they was like, because the characters from Camden, they were like, go on then. <laughs> 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 do it then, do the thing. And I was like, all right. And then, uh, and then uh, so yeah, so, um, so yeah, there was like a lot of like words, a lot of stuff that they were just like, we want it to be authentic. But like, I think it's just their, their obsession with detail, their obsession with authenticity, mm. their dedication to it is seen, not just with Hobie, you see it in Gwen's world, you see it in Miles's world, you see it in everywhere across the film, um, in every department really. So um, yeah. I was just, it was, it was my, the, my process was a bit of a symptom of that. Now, you've mentioned Camden there a few times, and I think you are one of the most well-known Arsenal supporters, certainly that I've heard of anyway. So, how are you doing? Are you OK after losing the season? Funny, what, what, who, do you, who do you support? Hey, hey, do you know what? I'm Irish of a certain age. Everyone my age supports Liverpool. That's what all the Irish people say. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it does, it does look like Arsenal are going after Declan Rice. Obviously, we have our own issues with Declan Rice having left us. I want to get. I don't want to get involved in that. I know you play for you guys. <laughs> I don't want to get involved in that. I just hope D. Rice lands at the Emirates. Hope he gets to Holloway calmly. That's all I care about. But do you? Do you think it'll be great if Declan gets to Arsenal? I want, of course, I want Declan Rice. Yeah. I want Declan Rice. Oh uh, yeah. That's all I say in the matter. Are, so, are you bringing it next year? Coming for Man City? Man City. Man City is like. Let's, no, I'm not going to give him a compliment like that. Like, so like uh, yeah, so like yeah, like, we'll do we we'll do our best, we we'll do our best. But but um, I think Arteta's done a great job. So how is everything else going? You've got the kitchen coming up, which is your very own program. Uh, you've set it up. It's set in a future dystopian London, a place that you love so much. You're back in the creator's seat. You're writing it. It's for Netflix. How's it going? It's going. <laughs> I've got like it's a meetings going. about it after this. Uh, uh, it's going. It's going. It's going. We've got we've got more. We're in, in post now. So it's. It's a lot of work, but it's like I'm learning loads. It's great. It's a great experience. And you're working with Michael Fassbender. He's executive producer. So does he? Does he like ever show up to work? Oh, Fassbender's a. I mean, like he's a, he's an exec. Do you know what I mean? That's an exec. He started it. He started the company. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? That kind of started the journey. So big up Fassbender. So he does nothing essentially. Is what you're saying? Like, listen, that's you said. That. They try to put me on me. Don't try to put it on me. If you if you flip this and say that I said that. I ain't got time for that. Daniel Kalua, thank you so much for joining us. Let's take another clip from Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, which is in cinemas now. Miles! Everyone keeps telling me how my story is supposed to go. Nah, I'm gonna do my own thing. Can this day get weirder? I guess it can. There we go. That looks awesome. Unbelievable. That's all we've got time for. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back live from 7 tomorrow Thank morning. you, Raymond. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.